happy Sabbath. Welcome uh, to the Sabbath of today. We are going to have our lesson discussion. And uh, before I do so, I have uh, our, our teachers here who are going to help us so that we can uh, do the lesson. So of, from my far left, I have uh, uh, Mwalimu Duke. Duke, you can introduce yourself. Santi Bona Yesu Asifiwe. Majina ni Duke Karosi. Na mungu wana wapenda. Karibuni kwa mm. sababu ya lesoni ya leo. Asante sana. Uh, karibu na ye, tuko na Sister Anne. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Mungu anawapenda. Amen. Asante sana. Then on my far uh, left, right is uh, Lewis Omari. Happy Sabbath. Kwa majina vila mesema ni Lewis Omari. Karibuni. Thank you very much. I am Calvin Ouma and we are going to uh, do the lesson uh, discussion. And before we do so, I would request Brother uh, Duke to open the word of prayer. Basi na tuombe, baba katika kina la Yesu, jina la kulitukuzwe. Santi kwa sabato, kutakatifu, umeanda kwa sababu, tunapo enda kuansa majadiliano kupite kwa njia leso, ni buwana wepu moja nasi. Na saidi mungu wote, wanao tusikia na wanao sikilisa neno hili, liwe la manufaa, itu geuse mio yetu, na saidi nituandaya kwa ajili ufalu mambao na ukuja katika kina la Yesu, mwana kwa amini. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to welcome you in a special way for the, dis the lesson discussion. And before uh, we do so, we let's have a sneak preview of our lessons from lesson one until now we are in lesson four. Uh, we've been looking uh, into the Bible as the word of God. And from our lesson one, we looked on how the uni uniqueness of the Bible. Lesson two, we also learned the origin and the nature of the Bible. And then in our previous lesson, which was last, uh, last week's lesson, was talking about Jesus and Apostle's view on the Bible. And uh, I will just have maybe a sneak preview and a, a summarized way of uh, our last week's lesson, which was talking about how the Apostle and Jesus himself had the view of the scripture, which is the, the word of God, and that's the Bible. When we opened our lesson discussion, uh, our lesson last week, we found when Jesus was having a reference to the Bible, which was by then was the Old Testament. And we looked on how he had reference to written words, which we looked previously from our previous lesson, lesson two, which was talking about how Moses was instructed to write uh, the lessons, uh, the, the, the teachings and the words that God was giving him. So Jesus was uh, uh, actually confirming what was written in the Old Testament through his defense when he was being tempted by the devil in the wilderness and he was saying that it is written and it is written and it is, and it is written. And also the apostles when, when, when they came, they also had to confirm that the Bible had uh, the impact in their life and it was the written words of God that if themselves were preaching and were, and, and, and were referring to. And that's why when we looked at uh, our last week's lesson, it was more about Jesus and the law, uh, more about uh, Jesus and the scripture, and we saw that Jesus and the scripture are two are uh, identical uh, things. Jesus is Jesus Christ, and the word of God is the word of God, and uh, Jesus and the origin of history of the Bible, and we saw how Jesus himself is confirming that the word of God came from God himself. And uh, more interestingly, we saw how the apostles themselves were given uh, giving reference to the Bible. And um, the only Bible which was available by then was the Old Testament. And they, st uh, and they st uh, strictly gave their uh, reasons why they had to refer to the Bible the way it was as Old Testament. Now, having that sneak preview of uh, Jesus and apostles' view on the Bible, I want to welcome you now to this week's lesson which talks about the Bible, the authoritative source of our theology. The Bible, the authoritative source of our theology. Maybe in a nutshell, we would like to understand this, the, the topic so that when we go through it, we have a, a, a more understanding of what we are discussing. In Swahili, it says that Biblia kama chimbuko, chama ch kama chimbuko lenye mamlaka, lenye mamlaka la theologia. La theologia. So, labda kwa fupi tu, dada an. Wewe kwako, unailewaje mada hii? The Bible, the authoritative source of our theology. Asante. 
topic yetu ya leo ambayo inaongea kuhusu Biblia kama chimbiko yenye kipawa cha teolojia yetu naelewa ya kwamba Biblia pekee ndio tunaangazia ama ndio tunayelekeza mawaso yetu na macho yetu kwalo tunapo kuziana na yale ambayo tunaamini ama kile kitu ambayo tunapata kwa imani yetu ni Biblia pekee ndio ngao Asante sana dada Ann. Uh, uh, ndugu Lewis, labda tu, tueleze kwa ufupi tu theology ni nini? Uende kama tunazungumzia kitu ambacho kwenda hata sisi wenyewe tuelewi. Theology ni nini? Uh, kwa kusema tu kulingana na vile nimeelewa uh, neno theolojia ni jambo ambalo unasoma jinsi Mungu uh, anafanya mambo yake, unaelewa ile Biblia, kisha unawaeleza wenzako ni kusoma Biblia kisha unapeana ule ujumbe ambao umepata kutoka kwa Biblia kuelekea uh, wale ambao wote ambao wangependa kujua zaidi ndio maana tunaona wachungaji wanaenda kusoma zaidi kuhusu Biblia kisha wanakuja kupeana ujumbe ambao uko katika Biblia Asante sana ndugu Lewis uh, theology kwa ufupi ni kwamba tunajaribu kungamua kujue huyu Mungu ni nani na namna ambavyo tunajaribu kutoa tafsiri wetu kuhusu huyu Mungu Na kwa kimombe nasama kwa mbiti an organized method of interpreting the spiritual works and the beliefs into practical forms. So the way we understand God himself through the Bible influence how we relate in our beliefs, how we relate in our spiritual works and also the beliefs we have. Now our opening uh, uh, this week's opening uh, kivas which is the memory text come from the book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse number 20. I would like us to read it uh, and to Duke, if you are there, read it for, for us. Isaiah. Isaiah 8. La, fungu lake la sema. Uh -huh. Na waenda kwa sheria na kwa shuda. Yes. Ikiwa hawasemi sawa sawa na eno hili, uh -huh. bila shaka kwao, hapa na subuhi. Asante sana. Kwa kimombi na sema kwa to the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to the word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, when we started uh, the study, we actually understood the scripture as the word of God. Now, when, when Isaiah is talking about that, to the law and his testimony, and if they don't do, I must speak according to the word, which is the word of God, which means they don't have light. So, does the word of God mean it is light to us? Yes, it is. Now, we can refer that to the book of Psalms chapter 119, Verse number 105, which says that your word is the light to my what? To my feet. Yes. And again, John chapter 1, verse 5, talks about that when the light was there, the darkness did not comprehend the what? The light, the, the, uh, the, the light itself. Now, in our Christian setup, we understand that there is no Christian church which does not use the Bible as their form or as their uh, origin, uh, as the origin of their belief or as their faith. All, church, all Christian churches are formed out of the Bible concept. And that's why we have different churches referring to the Bible as the only way, as the only source of their truth, as the only source of their reference, as the only source of their teaching. And remember that when we were looking at the, 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 the origin of the Bible, we found that all the verses, all the chapters of the, of the Bible are meant for teaching, they are meant for correction, they are meant for admonishing, and in holistically, this is what forms the faith or what forms the, 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 the belief we have uh, as a church. Now, the, the, there is no other church which does not use the Bible, as we had, had, had said earlier. In fact, the role of the scripture can also be greatly from the church, can also vary from one church to, to, one church to the other. And that's why Unakuta Kama Kuna a lot of uh, misunderstanding from one church to the other based on how they interpret uh, the, the Bible. Now, we have some aspects that are going, which are influencing how we understand the Bible and how we interpret it. And one of these uh, uh, aspects of our lives is tradition, is also experience, the culture we live in, the reasoning, how we reason, and the last one is the Bible itself. This aspect actually tries to influence how we understand and how we interpret the Bible. 
But now we, the question which I'm going to ask ourselves at the last of, at the, at the, at the end tail end of the of, of, of the discussion is that among the five aspects, which one is superior to the other, which forms what we believe in or what confirms our belief as Christianity? In a nutshell, I don't know how tradition actually influence how we understand uh, and how we interpret the scripture. Mila kuna tofauti mingi na kila uh, udamaduni na kila kabila wana udamaduni wao mm. jinsi ya kufanya kazi yao. Na pia jinsi ambavyo imeelekea so katika neno la Mungu ni ya kwamba mila ni ya kwamba mila zenyewe sio mbaya. Ni ila kusudi jinsi ambavyo neno hilo unalichukulia kulingana na jinsi ambavyo mafundisho umepata sawia na ndipo neno hili linakuja kwamba ni kifitendo hivi na ni mila ni ya kwamba kila moja unapo labda saliwa katika eneo lako kuna vile desu unaifuata lakini kulingana na hiyo basi mila senyewe sio vibaya sio mbaya katika maisha yetu ya Kristo inatuakisi tukijua kwamba hali hii ambao mila ambapo ambazo tuko nazo kama binadamu neno la Mungu linalo kusia na neno la Mungu ambalo linaleta ili mila sipate kutekelezwa baadhi yao ni ya kwamba mila hizi ni lazima siambatane na kila ambacho mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo ndani yetu sawia ni ya kwamba ulipokuwa ukiangalia kitabu cha mariko saba haya yake ni ya kwanza utasoma baka 13 kulingana jinsi ambavyo mila iliingiana mafarisayo na wayahudi waliingia kati wengine walipokuwa wanasema kwamba unapokuwa unatoka shambani ukiingia kula chakula lazima nawe mikono yako mila hiyo katika ma Mufarisao jinsi lesson libu nasema kwamba mila hiyo ni ya kwamba ililetwa na wazee bali kuletwa na Mungu na ndipo dini hii ilipoingiliana hakika neno la Mungu likuwa nasema kwamba hata kama sinaanzishwa na wazee walioheshimika sana hizo mila kwa mfano ni viongozi wa dini wa jamii ya Kiyahudi na asilingani na amri za Mungu ila tu silikuwa mila za wanadamu hatimaye sinawapeleka mahali ambapo sinatangua neno la nani Nia la Mwenyezi Mungu. Kwa hivyo ni heli ya kwamba katika hali hiyo yote ndipo unaona mila ambazo tunazo sisoma sasa hivi hakika zinalenga malengo ya kwamba sinamuinua huyu Yesu ama sinampeleka wapi. Sawia ni ya kwamba ulipokia ukiangalia katika hali ambapo wa Korinto wa kwanza ni 11 haya yake ya pili ilikuwa inasingatia sana ya kwamba msifuatishe sana mila za kidunia wala msifuatishe mimi ila tu Kristo basi kwa sababu hiyo mumekuwa ya kwamba katika mambo yote mumuinua huyu Yesu katika mila ambazo siku katika yetu. Bibi ya, ya pili ni ya kwamba neno hilo kupitia kwa neno la Mungu maandishi yalikuwa yanasema kwamba neno la Mungu lilo hai uanzishe ndani yetu mtasamo wa heshima which means mnapokuwa katika hii hali ya mila lakini heshima inapokuwa ndani yetu inaonesha pia heshima ya Mungu unapomuinua huyu Mungu. Na pia uaminifu ndani yetu na asua kilicho cha muhimu ni kwamba uaminifu wetu hata hivyo siku sote unahitaji kumtii Mungu aliye hai na huyu Mungu aliye hai ndiye anaoonesha kwamba ndipo sa Biblia ushikilia dhima ya kipekee inayosidi mila za binadamu kwa hivyo katika hali yetu ambayo jinsi ambavyo mila iko ndani ya Biblia idesture inaturekebisha kituelekeza kwamba heshima ambayo iliyo ndani ya Yesu Kristo. Heshima iliyo ndani katika mila asua labda mila ya wakisi. Iwe ni ya kwamba mila hii inakulenga na kuleta ndani ya maandiko matakatifu ikuelekeza katika usimu wa milele. Mwalimu. Asante sana. Um, Nashukuru sana mwalimu. Labda tuweze ku, 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 kuelewa mba, my fellow uh, church member. Labda uende kawa wewe mwenyewe umekwamilia mila fulani ambayo we umeiweka, umeinua kando na yale ambayo Biblia inasema. Tuzingatie kitabu cha uh, wa Yohana wa kwanza, fungu lake la la 4 mstari wa wa kwanza. Inasema nini? Yohana wa kwanza, fungu la 4 mstari wa wa kwanza, inasema nini? Yohana wa kwanza? Eh eh. Fungu la 4. Inasema nini? Mstari wa kwanza. Eh. Wapenzi. Eh eh. Msiamini kila roho. Yes. Bali sijaribuni hizo roho. Uh -huh. Kwamba simetokana na Mungu uh -huh. kwa sababu manabii wa uongo uh -huh. wengi uh -huh. wametokea duniani. Asante sana. Uende kawa mila yenu ama mila yako ambayo umeikwamilia 
inaongozwa na roho ambayo si roho ya nani roho ya Mungu ni posa mwandishi alisema anatuambia kwamba biblia lazima isimame juu kuliko mila zetu kama binadamu yeah. kwa sababu ukiweka mila, uh, mila yako juu ya uh, ya biblia ita, itaonekana kwamba wewe unazingatia tu mila ya nani mila ya kibinadamu ambayo haina nini haina mahana so biblia inasimamia mila zetu iwe nzuri ama iwe mbaya na kama kuna mila ambayo inaenda kinyume cha mapenzi ya Mungu lazima tuweka nini tuilinganisha na Biblia na Biblia. Je, katika uzoefu wetu uzoefu ya maisha ina inazakinzana na namna ambavyo tunaelewa Biblia ama namna ambavyo tunajua ama tunajaribu kungamua ukweli kuhusu Biblia. The experience. Dada Ann. Asante mwalimu. Uh-huh. Tuko katika siku hii ambayo nasungumza kuhusu uzoefu na tunaletewa jambo hili ili kutuonyesha kwamba kumbe pia usoefu wetu unaweza kuleta mtasamo mwingine ama utafauti katika kutafsiri maandiko na hapa tumepewa fungu kitabu ya Warumi mbili mstari wake wa inne na kitabu ile nyingine ya Taito ama Titus tatu mstari wake wa na tano swali tunalo uliswa ni kwamba je usoefu wetu una mna gani ama unalingana aje na ukristo wetu kwa kiingereza swali na uliza how do we experience the goodness for parents for kindness and kindness and love of god ndaenda kusoma fungu hilo kitabu cha warume mbili mstari wa 4 ambao unasema au waudarao wingi wa wema wake na ustaimilifu na ustaimilifu wake na ufumilifu wake Usijue ya kuwa wema wa Mungu wa kufuta upate kutupu. Neno hili tumeletewa tukiulizo usoefu wetu uko namna gani? Watu wengi wako na usoefu mwingi katika maisha yao na uhusiano wao na Mungu ambao umeleta tofauti katika kuelewa maandiko. Lakini tunalopata hapa ni kwamba usoefu wetu na Mungu experience ambayo tuko na na Mungu wetu inafai tuleta karibu na Mungu na wala si tuondoe na experience yetu usoefu wetu unafaa ulingane na neno la Mungu kwa sababu kama hayambatani na neno la Mungu basi usoefu huo hauna maana katika maisha yako ya Ukristo na mambo mengi ambayo tunapitia watu wengi wakisema nimepitia haya ama nime na usoefu hivi na Mungu wangu unaweza kukuleta karibu na Mungu ama kuondoe mbali kwa, kwa mfano mmoja anaweza kuja kuulisa ya kwamba katika usoefu wangu nime um, nimepata ujumbe ama Mungu amesungumza nami ya kwamba niweze kuabudu tuseme siku nyingine la sande na sio siku ya sapata ambayo si ya kweli kwa hivyo hapo utapata ya kwamba unapolinganisha na neno la Mungu usoefu wako unavaa uambatana na neno la Mungu utapata ukweli kupitia kwa neno la Mungu so tunalochifundisha hapa leo ni kwamba usoefu wetu unaweza kuwa wa mdanganyifu mno na tunaposungumza usoefu wetu unafaa kulingana na neno la Mungu na inafaa pia iwe ni iko in harmony with God's word and will kama yambatane na neno la Mungu na uwezo wa Mungu basi usoefu wako si wa kweli ndasoma hapa jambo ambalo mwandishi wetu ametuambia siku ya leo ya kwamba sometimes you want to experience something that is out of harmony with God's word and will here we need to learn to trust the word of god even over our experience and desires lazima tupate ku tupate ku kuamini kwa neno la Mungu saidi ya usoefu wetu na usoefu wako epo na uwezo kuchengwa kwa neno la Mungu imani ambayo imechengwa na upendo wa Mungu na upendo wa wengine ni imani ama ni sheria kuu na ni imani ambayo inafaa kutupea usoefu ulio, ulio muhimu ambao utachengwa katika neno la Mungu na ndio inayofaa katika imani yetu. Asante sana mwalimu. Uh, tumeona kwamba uzoefu leo wetu lazima uambatanishwe na neno la Mungu. Na kama huna mazoea ile kulingana na namna ambavyo Biblia inasema uende kaa uzoefu wako uende kaa itakuwa imefanya nini? Imekupotosha ama inapotosha wengine ambao unaoelezea. Je, katika uh, maisha yetu tunao uzoefu tunao mila sijui kama uh, utamaduni wetu pia unaweza kuwa unachangia sana namna ambavyo huwa tunatoa tafsiri ya biblia ama namna ambavyo huwa tunaelewa biblia uh, ndugu lewis utamaduni wetu una nini kuhusu kulewa kwetu kwa biblia uh, na nashukuru sana uh, nimeweza kuona kwamba walimu wameweza ku 
uh, kuchangia sehemu mbalimbali katika lesoni ya wiki hii na wameweza kutueleza mambo mengi ambayo yana determine how we interpret the bible na mambo haya ni mengi na tusipoangalia vizuri huenda tukaenda mbali na biblia ambao eh, Mungu anataka tuelewe na ujumbe ambao Mungu angependa tuelewe uh, jambo la muhimu ni kwamba uh, kipindi hiki tunakitumia ili kueleza lesoni ya kuota hii na lesoni ya kuota hii imekuwa ni ya kwamba tuelewe biblia kikamilifu na tumeweza kuona hapo awali kupitia lesoni ambazo za, ya, za wiki iliyopita ni ya kwamba biblia ndiyo teule na biblia iliandikwa na ni lugha ya Mungu ambayo anazungumza nasi tukichukulia biblia kama Mungu akizungumza nasi basi sisi kuelewa kwetu biblia lazima iwe na mwenendo huo ya kwamba ni Mungu anazungumza nasi katika upande mwingine tunaangalia uh, somo letu ambalo linazungumza about culture culture kwa Kiswahili umesema ni nini utamaduni utamaduni, utamaduni. Mm. na tradition tukasema ni mila yeah, yeah. utamaduni vile tunapoishi na mahali ambapo tunatoka ni ya kwamba kila mtu ana utamaduni fulani hata ukienda kwa ofisi fulani unapata wana utamaduni wao they have different cultures even when unaenda katika shule zingine unapata kuna culture ambayo iko katika hiyo shule kama ni culture ya ku keep time iko katika hiyo shule na culture hii ambayo tumeweza kuona ni ya kwamba biblia yenyewe ilipotoka ilitoka katika utamaduni wa wana wa Israeli na hivyo basi ilipotolewa na wakaweza kupata ujumbe huu na wakaweza kumjua Yesu katika utamaduni ule wao haimaanishi kwamba utamaduni wao ni bora kuliko ut- utamaduni wetu na utamaduni huu huo una maana ama kwa njia ya kimombo has an influence in how we interpret and how we study the word of god na culture hii inaweza fanya tuende mbali na mapenzi ya Mungu ama tuweze kuwa katika mapenzi ya Mungu na culture hii inatuonyesha mahali ambapo sisi tumetoka na inaonyesha pia tabia yetu ambayo tumeweza kui kuitekeleza lakini Mungu katika Biblia hii anazungumza nasi kupitia kwa kitabu ya Yohana wa kwanza uh, fungu la pili kutoka verse 15 to 17 ambao ningesoma kwa haraka inasema do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but of this world and the world is passing away and the last of it but he who does the will of god abides forever jinsi tumeona kutoka hapo ni kwamba dunia ina utamaduni mbalimbali lakini mungu ametuonya kwamba tunapoishi katika dunia hii tuchangamane na wengine lakini tusichukue mali mwengo katika maisha yetu na culture ama utamaduni kama vile maumbile yote ambayo yako katika ulimwengu ni humo ni kwamba baada ya dhambi kuingia yote yanapata ya kasoro viumbe vyote vilipata kasoro baada ya dhambi kuingia sawa sawa pia e, utamaduni una kasoro zake na utamaduni huu unaweza ukafanya jinsi tunav, tunavyomuelewa Mungu ikatupeleka mbali na tukakosa kumuelewa Mungu wetu na hivyo basi tukakosa hata kupata ule uzima wa milele na dada white kutoka kitabu chake councils to parents teachers and students anatupa uh, mwelekezo huu ya kwamba the followers of Christ are to separate from the world in principles and interests msimamo wetu na matamanio yetu lazima yawe tofauti na yale ya dunia but they are not to isolate themselves from the world tuchangamane na wao lakini tusimamishe ule ukweli ambao uko katika Biblia uh, kuendelea pia kuna upande mwingine tuna, tunaweza kuona katika lesoni hii ambayo ilikuwa inazungumza about uh, reason sijui kwa Kiswahili nasema reason ni jambo gani fikra fikra, fikra. 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 kuna kila mwanadamu ana ule uzoefu na anaweza kusoma kitu na anaweza kufikiria kuangalia kitu na kukifikiria na kupeana suluhu na it is the ability to think and reason that is god given na kila mwanadamu ana uwezo huu na kuna wale kupitia kwa kuelewa jambo hili wameanza kuweka misingi hiyo katika kanisa mbalimbali mbali, na hata katika kanisa hili letu la kiadventista na wakaweza kupotosha wengi kupitia kwa wao kutumia fikra zao na kuweka biblia kando 
ikawa kama huo ndio msimamo wa kweli na kila mwanadamu ambaye amepewa uwezo huu ni kwamba uwezo huu usitupeleke mbali na neno la Mungu. Tukisoma neno tusije na fikra zetu ambazo tunazo ambazo tunafikiria ndio ndi, 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 ndi ukweli na tukaleta katika neno la Mungu. Tunapoenda kwa Biblia tunasoma na uh, wanasema a, a clean slate ukuje pale kuelewa lakini ukija na fikra zako basi vile unaelewa Biblia inakuwa tofauti. Uh, na kuna wale wametumia fikra hizo ambao lesoni ilikuwa inasema the view that is called rationalism ya kwamba we rationalize everything we try to find a, a balance in everything na unapata mara, 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 mara mingi pale ambapo biblia ina, inasimama na inawakanya wanadamu na kulingana na wao yale ambao wamesimamia ni kama biblia inawakwaza basi wanaweka biblia kando na wanasimama na fikira zao na jambo hili litatupoteza ya kwamba Biblia ndio msingi wa Ukristo. Na jambo hili ambalo ningependa kuongezea ni ya kwamba ikiwa sisi wote kama Wakristo tutatumia Biblia kama kielekezo jinsi ya kumfikia Kristo inamaanisha ya kwamba sisi lazima tuwe na tabia moja kwa sababu Biblia tunayoisoma ni moja. Lakini jambo la, la kushangaza ni ya kwamba kwa sababu tumeweka utamaduni, tumeweka human reasoning, tumeweka uh, mila mbalimbali mbali, imefanya vile tunaelewa Biblia imekuwa tofauti na ndivyo basi tuna uh, makanisa hata makanisa mengi. Na kwa upande huu ambao ni wa, uh, about reasoning, ningependa tusome kutoka wa Korintho wa pili uh, chapter 10 verse 5 to 6 ambaye inasema casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled hivyo basi tunaonya kwamba tuweke yote ambayo yanakinzana na mapenzi ya Mungu tuyaweke kando na katika methali moja saba ambayo inasema the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and inst- instruction. Na tumeweza kuona ile 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 haki ya kufikiria ikiwa itaongozwa na roho mtakatifu, ikiwa itaongozwa na neno la Mungu, then that is wisdom in itself. Na kumalizia ni ya kwamba mambo haya yote ambayo tumeweza kusoma ni ya kwamba tuyaangalie na tuyaeke katika mizani ambayo ni neno la Mungu na hiyo ni Biblia ya kwamba ikiwa yanakinzana basi tunachukua mkondo ambao ni wa Biblia. Ikiwa yanaenda sawa sawa na, bibi, na Biblia, tufuatilie na tuendelee kuyatekeleza. Na haya yote ni ya kwamba ikiwa katika tamaduni zetu, katika mila zetu, yote ambayo tunafanya yaweza kumuinua Mungu. Na nasema ni asante. Ah, uh, yote tuweke Mungu mbele na ufalme wa Mungu tutaupata. Asante sana. Ah, nimeona namna ambavyo kuelewa kwa, kwetu kwa Mungu inawekwa ikiwa katika hali ngumu tukiweka fikira zetu mbele. Je, ili tuelewe Mungu ni nani? Biblia ina suluhu gani kwetu kama wale ambao tunataka kujua Mungu ni nani? Uh, ndugu Duke. Nashukuru. Nashukuru sana mwalimu kwa sababu jinsi ambavyo mwalimu ameleta fundisho hilo ya kwamba tunapaswa katika hali yote kumtegemea huyu Mungu. Na kwa kike katika hali jinsi ambavyo Biblia tulipoanza jinsi ambavyo chimbuko lote na inkana kwamba ni mzito ambao umebeba na msitu huo hata kama nikichaka ni kwamba kuna miti ndani. Na ndivyo ilivyo sasa Biblia katika hayo yote inatuleta kwa ukaribu mbona ikisema kwamba kupitia kwa njia ya Roho Mtakatifu basi amefunua na kuviwa yaliyomo ndani ya neno hili la Mwenyezi Mungu na kupitia kwa wanadamu na kwa hakika sisi binafsi wenyewe hatuwezi hama mwanadamu hawezi kamwe kuongoza kupitia kwa kijume cha neno la Mwenyezi Mungu ni neno la Mungu ambalo ndilo chimbuko kwa ajili neno hili tu haswa ndipo linaloleta uhai ndani ya mwanadamu Jinsi tulivyo anza mwanzo pale ni ya kwamba haya yote tunapoyasoma utamaduni fikra pamoja na yale yote ambao tunayoingia ndani yao yanapatikana kutoka ndani ya neno la Mwenyezi Mungu. Na neno hili linaletwa kwetu kupitia kwa njia ya Roho Mtakatifu. Pili, Biblia pekee ndicho kiegeso ambacho kila kitu 
kinahitaji kujaribiwa kwayo kupitia kwa mila zetu kupitia kwa dhamana kwetu itajaribiwa nini na neno hili la Mwenyezi Mungu ndivyo ilivyo uvunuo huu wa kipekee wa neno la Mwenyezi Mungu mwandishi alipokuwa anasema kwamba sasa singine watu wengine hudai kuwa wamepokea ufunuo wa kipekee maagizo kutoka kwa roho mtakatifu lakini haya huenda kinyume na ujumbe wa Biblia ni Biblia tu inaye mamlaka makuu na kuna neno lililo na ukuu wote ila Biblia ambao imevufiwa na roho wa Mungu na neno hili jinsi ambavyo tunavyoangalia kwamba roho anapotongoza kulisomwa neno hili la Mwenyezi Mungu basi inatupatia ile hamu ya kusoma maandiko ambayo ni Biblia takatifu na hilo ndilo neno jinsi ambavyo Yohana mmoja kwamba hapo mwanzo kulikuwa kuna neno na hilo neno ndilo Yesu kwa hivyo neno hili Biblia tunapoiangalia ni ya kwamba tunapaswa kuheshimu katika hali yote na tunapoiweka ndani ya mioyo yetu basi tunaitwa wote hule kupitia kwa njia ya roho ule wa ukweli anayefanya kazi ndani ya hili neno ningependa labda tuangalie tu fungu ambalo ningependekeza sana kupitia kwa Yohana saba haya yake ni 38 mwalimu an unaweza soma Yohana saba aya yake ni 38 ndipo sikia kwamba jinsi andiko hili Yesu mwenyewe na Biblia ni chanzo kikuu na kuelewa maswali yaliyo ndani kupitia kwa njia ya kiroho na inathibitisha kwamba huyu Yesu ni masi na ni masi wa ukweli tunaliona katika ndani ya Biblia mwalimu an Yohana 7:38 inasema aniaminie mimi uh-huh. kama vile maandiko yalivyonena yeah. mito ya maji yaliyo hai itatoka ndani yake Amina aniamini ni mimi vile andiko linasema mwalimu na wanao tusikiliza ni kwamba basi tunaomwamini Mungu andiko hili litakuwa bubujiko kutoka ndani ya mioyo yetu na kupitia kwayo roho wa Mungu ambaye anayeleta haya yote atadhihirisha na litadhihirika ndani yetu. Malizia tu katika kitabu cha uh, Timotheo wa kwanza. Mlango wa 4 haya yake ya sita. Na ndio usikie wapendo ile uzuri na utamu ulio ndani ya neno hili la Mungu. Na kuhakika neno la Mungu ni tamu linayotuongoza, linayotugeuza undakapolipokea na hilo hilo neno litakuelekeza katika ule uzima wa milele. Mwalimu Timotheo wa kwanza haya yake ni eh, mlango wa 4 haya yake ni ya sita. Neno la Mungu lasemaje? Inasema hivi hmm. Uwakumbushe ndugu mm-hmm. mambo hayo mm-hmm. nawe utakuwa mtumishi mwema wa Kristo Yesu na msoefu wa maneno ya imani na mafundisho mazuri yale uliyoyafuata hakika ni kwamba si kasi yetu kukaa na kuyahukumu maandiko mwalimu badala yake ni kwamba neno la Mungu lina haki na mamlaka ya kutukumu sisi na mawasi yetu hata hivyo neno la Mungu mwenyewe ambaye aliloliandika kupitia kwa mikono yake na watumishi wake Mungu akubariki Asante sana mm. sana sana mwalimu uh, namna ambavyo tumeelewa ni kwamba fikira zetu utamaduni zetu mila zetu haina maana kama haijazingatia yale ambayo Biblia inasema ili tuelewe teolojia yetu ambayo ni namna ambavyo tunajaribu kujua Mungu ni nani lazima turejelee katika Biblia sio sio fikira zetu sio tamaduni zetu sio mila uende kama mila zetu zetu ziwe nzuri lakini wakati zinakaa zinaonekana kwamba ziko na umuhimu kuliko Biblia zinatutoa mbali kisha tunaanza kufikiria kwamba sisi pia tunawahi nini tuko na uwe tuko na uwezo kuna kisa kimoja ambacho tulishuhudiwa katika historia ambapo rais wa Amerika samani sana ajaribu kukosoa Biblia na kujaribu kuandika alikuwa anaitwa uh, Thomas Jefferson mwenye alikuwa anajaribu kutoa uh, maandishi ambayo alikuwa ameandikwa na, na Mungu mwenyewe kupitia kwa uh, 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 wafuazi wa, 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 wale ambao aliweza kuwapa Roho mtakatifu kuandika kulingana na yeye fikira zake aliona kwamba hayo hayafai akataka ha, kuzitoa kuzitoa wazungu wanasema hivi nataka ni nukuu um, um, mwandishi wa lesoni kwamba in one sense culture experience reason and even tradition in themselves might not be necessary to too bad they become problems when they contradict what the scripture does what teach wakati unafikiria wakati uko katika tamaduni ambazo zinaingia katika mila kama mila yako kama fikira zako kama tamaduni zako 
inakinzana namna na ambavyo Biblia inasema we unafanya nini umepotoka Biblia ni, ni, ni nia ya Mungu na ni Mungu mwenyewe so lazima tuzingatie namna ambavyo Biblia inasema nataka kwa dakika moja tu sekunde moja tu walimu dakika moja tu useme tu cha kumalizia kisha tupate ombi ya mwisho uh, mwalimu Duke na mnashukuru kwa sababu ya neno la leo pitia jinsi ambavyo tunavyoangalia neno la Mungu kupitia kwa hali ya mwanadamu ndivyo ilivyo nasi Saidi yote tunaangalia Saidi unapata hali ya mwanadamu inafikiria kipingine na Mungu nasi neno hili la leo linapaswa kutuambia kwamba sisi wenyewe tunapaswa kumheshimu Mungu katika hali yetu na ukiangalia katika Yesu anapoambia wanafunzi wake kwamba inaonekana kwamba kumbuka katika eh, nabii Isa alipoandika kwamba watu hao wananiheshimu kwa midomo tu ila mioyo yao iko mbali nami. Kwa hivyo ni heri ya kwamba wapende lolote tunalo litenda leo neno ambalo la kumuinua nani Mwenyezi Mungu. Saidi yote tutakapo muamini Mungu, roho wa Mungu awe pamoja nasi ili atuonekanie tunapoangalia katika hali yetu ya maisha kwanza tumweke Mungu mbele kwa kila hali na kwa kila njia zote zile. Dada Ann, sekunde moja. Ehe. Tasamaje na msikilizaji. Neno kuu la leo ni kwamba ujue kwamba Biblia ndio nguzo la pekee ambayo unafaa kuweka tumaini lako kwalo. Kama umekuwa ukitumainia usoefu wako na tradition, culture hizo sota sina maana. Biblia ndio pekee uweze kuiangazia na utaweza kujua Mungu zaidi na uweze kubarikiwa. Sandi ndugu Lewis, uh, kumalizia ni kwamba tumeweza kuangalia katika wiki hii uh, mambo mengi ambayo yanatuelekeza yana jinsi tunaelewa Biblia. Na jambo ambalo ningependa kuongezea ni kwamba Biblia hii tumeweza kuiangalia kwa kina ya kwamba kwa kweli iliandikwa uh, kupitia kwa uwepo wa Mungu. Kupitia kwa Roho Mtakatifu akazungumza na wengi wakaweza kuandika Biblia hii. Kila neno ambalo tunalolisoma kutoka kwa Biblia hii ni ya kwamba ni Mungu mwenyewe anazungumza nasi. Na tukichukulia hivyo itakuwa uh, jambo ambalo litabadilisha maisha yetu kwa maana tunasikia sauti yake na tunaweza kutii. Kumalizia ni ya kwamba kuna wale wamechukulia uh, misingi ya utamaduni ya uh, mila na kufikiria kwa, kwa mtu binafsi wakatumia kama msingi wa kuchambua Biblia kisa na maana ikaleta makanisa tofauti haya yote tuweke na msingi wa Biblia tukisoma ya kwamba uh, Biblia ikiwa ni mwongozo wetu yote ambayo tunapitia ya kipimo na Biblia tutakuwa tunatenda kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu na tunavyo tenda hivyo yoyote katika maisha yote ambayo tunaishi jambo lolote ambalo tunakabiliana tuna nalo tuliweza kulipima na Biblia na kisha tuweza kufanya kulingana na mapenzi ya Mungu tuweza kubarikiwa Asante sana ah nimewashukuru sana walimu mapenzi ambayo unanitazama unanisikiza ukitaka kujua ukita kujua kuhusu Mungu usisome tamthilia wala riwaya ama hadithi nyingine Biblia hii ina mambo ya kuelewa ina mambo kupitia kwa Roho Mtakatifu utaelewa yale ambayo Mungu amekadiria sisi kwetu tuweze kuelewa kuhusu yeye ili unapopeleka ujumbe kule nje unapeleka ujumbe ambayo wewe mwenyewe umesoma na umeyafuatilia na umeyale umeyaelewa nimeshukuru sana walimu ambao tumekuwa nao tangu tuanze tunapomaliza tunakusii kwamba hapo chini hatuna tuna muda wa kutoa maswali lakini hapo chini tu kuna sehemu ya kutoa comment hapo kwa YouTube channel yetu kutoa comment toa comment kama kuna swali uh, toa swali hapo tunajaribu kuziweka ili next time tukikuja katika uh, eh, kikao hiki tuweze kutoa eh, majawabu kulingana na namna ambavyo mmeuliza maswali asante sana kwa muda wako asante sana kukuwa nasi tunapomalizia tunataka tupate ombi kupitia kwa ndugu Lewis ah tuweze kuamini na kuomba uishie juu mbinguni tunakurudishia shukrani umeweza kutuongoza kupitia kwa roho wako mtakatifu na tumeweza kusoma neno lako na tukajifunza ya kwamba uh, maisha yetu na yote ambayo tunayo yapitia hata kutoka kwa tamaduni zetu mbalimbali mbali, na mila zetu mbalimbali mbali, tuweze kuyapima yote kulingana na neno lako na ya kwamba neno lako ni la maana katika maisha yetu tuweze kuzingatia yote ambayo tunayopitia tuangalie katika neno lako na kwa kweli utazungumza nasi endelea kutuongoza hata katika kota hii tutakapokuwa tukichambua Biblia na kujifunza mengi kupitia kwa roho wako mtakatifu tufunze na uh, fanya mioyo yetu iweze kukusikiza 
na kufuata kulingana u, u, jinsi upendavyo tunaomba uweze kuwa nasi ni katika jina la Yesu tumeomba na kuamini amen, amen. uwe na sabato njema na ubarikiwe